We're taking a closer look this morning at some of the Liberals' headline promises in the budget announced just yesterday. One of them, one of the main one, has to do with one of those perennial conversations in Canadian cities, especially for millennials, how to get into the housing market. Cameron McIntosh now with more on what the Liberals are offering to would-be first-time home buyers. This budget bumps up the amount buyers can take from an RSP to $35,000. It also offers a shared equity mortgage, up to 10% of the value of a mortgage to be paid back over time or when the home is sold. What's unclear, though, is what happens if the home goes up or down in value, and it's only on mortgages up to $480,000. That may work in a mid-sized market like Winnipeg, not so much in Canada's two most expensive markets, Vancouver and Toronto. The view here is phenomenal. <laughs> Where 31-year-old buyer Mauricio Valderrama can tell you, 480 doesn't get you in the door. If there's something that I can take advantage of, I'll consider it, but for what I've seen, it won't make an impact. There are fears more lending could just drive up prices more. First-time home buyers do tend to have a relatively high debt load relative to income. We're going to be putting more people in that high debt to income bracket. The federal government says details of the plan are still being worked out, but is committing to have it in place by September 1st. Cameron McIntosh, CBC News, Winnipeg. Oh, from Cameron's report, what does it look like in terms of real dollars? Here's the breakdown that was provided in the budget yesterday using the example of a $400,000 home. You see on one side, there's no incentive and, and on the right, the new program. It shows that $40,000 shared equity loan from CMHC. That's for a new home, 10% on a new home resale. It's a 5% loan. And what you see is you have the same down payment, then you add in that incentive, an extra $40,000. It takes the amount that you have to pay in a mortgage down to $340,000, takes the monthly carrying costs down as well by a little bit over $200 per month. So that is the thinking, and that is... Uh, uh, considerable savings, according to the government's way of working things out. Let's find out from someone who was directly targeted with that budget measure. I'm going to now, introduce you now to Eric Gillis, who is 26 years old. He has an undergraduate degree, a BA in Labor Studies from McMaster in Hamilton, full-time job that pays between 50 and 60 grand a year, and he rents his own apartment. That's where he is this morning as we talk to him. Eric, good morning to you. Great to have you on the program to hear your story. So listen, you've been trying to get into the housing market in Hamilton, Ontario, and what have you been running into? Uh, it, simply, it's just it's not an affordable step at this point for me and um, honestly, most people my age, uh, most of my friends, it's just not a, it's not something that's even feasible. It's not something we can even really break into. At, is it the down payment? Is it the carrying cost? It, the down payment, the carrying cost, what, what are the obstacles? It's, both. it's definitely it's definitely both. Down payments are a big part because especially for people my age, we're coming out of school with, with typically thousands upon thousands of dollars of debt that are essentially preventing you from doing savings. But getting those savings together in the first place is, is already a barrier. And then with the inflation of housing costs as it is, it's it's just not something that's really feasible right now. Okay. So this is exactly the situation the finance minister was trying to address for people like you. So let's talk about what he did. Those measures, let's begin with the shared equity loans that Cameron was just uh, laying out, the 5% or the 10% coming from the CMHC. What do you think of that? I do think that is a good step for sure. I, however, don't think it goes far enough and I don't think it addresses the real problem in that, well, having a 5% or 10% reduction in a mortgage is helpful. The reality is most people my age are struggling to even get savings together in the first place. So you, it, you're not really going to benefit from that if you don't already have savings to pull from to make that something you can access. Uh, and I think it doesn't do enough to address the need for affordable housing in Canada in general. And the other provision that he's mentioned that Cameron was talking about in the budget uh, contains is increasing the amount you can take from your RRSP to use toward that from 25% to 35%. Right, from 25,000 to 35,000, yeah. yeah sorry, sorry 25,000 to 35,000, yes. Um, 
Oh, I find very funny because I, I can speak for uh, most people my age, I feel, in that <laughs> the idea of having 25,000 to 35,000 sitting in your RSP at this point in time is uh, laughable. <laughs> um, it's not something that is helpful for most people when you're still trying to pay down student debt and still trying to struggle to make ends meet. Uh, and the housing market is just simply, it's not accessible for people, most people my age Yikes. at this point. So does yeah. this change the dream of home ownership at all? It was out of reach before. Does it change things for you then? I think if you meet a specific circumstance, me, uh, it helps, but it still doesn't get me there where I need to be. It's still going to be some time before I'm in a position where accessing this sort of help is going to be something that is beneficial to me personally. Uh, and I think that's the most case for most people. I, I think really it doesn't tackle the problem of if you're trying to get millennials into the housing market, we need concrete measures to actually build affordable housing. So tell me what would have helped you more at this point in your life. I think the government taking on the actual concrete measure of putting themselves into the market of building affordable housing directly and working with provincial and municipal governments to actually ensure that affordable housing is being created would be more of a tangible step to getting millennial home ownership as okay. opposed to simply this. Lots of incentives that, for, for rental housing building in this budget, but again, that's not home ownership. That's something uh, entirely different. Um, part of the plan with this announcement, of course, is to appeal, like all of the budget, to appeal to key constituencies for the fall election. Uh, people your age among them, what does this do? How will this affect your vote in the fall? I'm going to be honest, I don't think it's going to sway votes in the way that they're hoping to amongst people my age because it simply didn't actually address the actual problem for us. Give me a mark for this. Give me if you're just out of school. This is good. Give me a mark for the yeah, for fair. what the, what the I, fair I would, comment. It's it's not it's not a bad step. It's it's useful, but I think it was a step in what should have been a multi-pronged plan and a multi-pronged attack into attacking affordable housing and getting millennial home ownership to become on the rise. Uh, this would be like a I don't know a six out of ten for me at best. Okay, Eric, great to speak to you this morning. All the best in the hunt, in the saving, and in the plan for the future for you. I appreciate the time this morning.